Hello, and thank you for stopping by today to learn more about transforming class time with role play and AI. I'm Dr. Allison Belzer. I teach history at Georgia Southern University based in Savannah, Georgia and Statesboro, and I'm excited to be part of the Open Ed 24 conference. I want to start off by talking about um, what is role playing games. Hopefully we can all just agree that they are uh, interesting and engaging ways to help students learn about difficult concepts. You may have heard of reacting to the past. That's probably the most prominent brand, as it were, um, of faculty putting together uh, reacting to the past games. It started at Barnard College a couple decades ago, pioneered by Mark Carnes. And if you want to read some studies about it, I recommend his book, Minds on Fire, or um, the more pedagogical view, playing to learn with reacting to the past, really just highlighting how these high impact practices can make a big difference for students. I teach world civilizations and have often used the French Revolution game. Basically, as the website says, reacting to the past games, students are assigned character roles with specific goals, and they must communicate, collaborate, and compete effectively to advance their objectives. Reacting promotes engagement with big ideas and improves intellectual and academic skills. And I've really enjoyed using reacting to the past over the years and other role playing uh, variations. These are photos from different kinds of games, from different levels of higher ed classes that I've taught. What I really like about it is the active learning the way it engages students. You can see in these photos, uh, they're quite connected. Uh, and I think for me, the way it helps them examine history through multiple, sometimes conflicting lenses to understand a little bit more about the agency and contingencies uh, that make un events unfold as they do. I think it's really valuable for them to embody positions outside their own identity fostering empathy, in addition to all kinds of soft skills like public speaking, networking, communicating uh, that you can maybe see going on in these photos. And I got so excited about it, I decided to write my own game and with my colleague, Dr. Alina Pirock, we put together a grant proposal uh, to write a long form game about the Enola Gay controversy at, at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in the mid 1990s. We got a great grant from uh, Affordable Learning Georgia to fund some summer research, uh, trips to react to the past conferences, but most importantly, to hire students to help us write and construct the games. We finished that up in the spring of 2023, and you can access that OER for free uh, through the Affordable Learning Georgia website or uh, our live guide. I'd be happy to tell you more about it. Um, this is our kind of finished cover, and once our librarians who were very helpful in getting us uh, working with us to get the grant. Once they got wind of the finished product, they asked us to put on uh, a workshop for the entire Georgia Southern community um, at our library. This was going to be a very different task because the game that we designed had two forms. One takes about five weeks to play in class, one a little bit more like two weeks, but they wanted a two-hour version, uh, and that seemed hard, and Alina and I felt like uh, we'd already done a lot of work on it. And so I thought I would turn to AI to get their help shortcutting uh, the game. And I subscribed to Gemini Advanced, although it used to at least be the first two months are free. What I really wanted was help figuring out how to shorten the game. Um, I asked AI for help with a workshop, layout, how much time we have, help me do an outline, um, which characters do you think would be the key ones? Now, I've got a lot of research already done on this. Uh, so I'm really using AI to help simplify and, and zoom in on you know, what might be the most key points. One of our main issues is that we had written very elaborate roles for our characters, all based on real people from the era. Uh, and they were two pages, three pages, maybe even four and five pages long. That's too much to hand somebody at the start of a workshop. And so I asked AI, generative AI, to help me figure out how to do shorter worksheets. I was so impressed that I just kept feeding in the names of characters and actually even asked for Gemini's advice about who else might be useful characters so we could have some neutral players that maybe we hadn't even thought of before. One of the nicest things about this was they came already formatted. So even though I had the information, instead of deleting and adding bullet points, I could just add it straight into a Google Doc. And I found that a really helpful time saver. AI also helped me brainstorm about how to shorten the game and how to zoom in, um, as I mentioned before. So I asked it, what are the three key questions? We narrowed it down to one or two, um, depending on how the time went in the workshop. Um, but I think that kind of holistic view really, really helped me. And in fact, it even provoked some new ways of thinking about it. Um, I realized that we hadn't really incorporated polls. What did people think? 
both in the 1940s when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and also in the 1990s when this controversy took place. And so I was able through the brainstorming to really nuance the game in a way that would make it more focused for this quick workshop. Just as an example, you can see here, I just cut and pasted. This is our old longer form. Um, student debate is a huge part of role playing. And so you wanna make sure the students are well informed and can do their own research. But for the workshop, we really just needed the overview. So here is just the much shorter half page that they got. We superimposed it onto our um, letterhead. So what other uses? So I started to think, okay, I, I, this is something I knew a lot about, but what about things I don't know as much about? I'm teaching a course this semester in Savannah in a global, global context. So I asked Gemini, help me think of a role-playing game with 20 roles for students that would be key issues in the founding of Georgia. I had some of my own points, I thought, but I really appreciated getting a quick list. And I could imagine having students do their own research to figure out what, um, what needed to, what they needed to know in order to make a, a in class debate happen. I know Gemini is paid, so I also asked ChatGPT four, which for now is free. I got a very similar kinds of uh, suggestions with some of the same people. How can I stress to students the global connections of the early Savannah uh, settlers and people who are already here? Again, asking for an outline. I found that very helpful and look forward to trying to implement that in class. So I think this brainstorming aspect is important, but I also think there's other ways that students can learn AI. Oftentimes I think um, AI uh, emerging technology feels a little bit like a solution in search of a problem. And people have talked a lot about using AI with grading or with content creation. Um, I think we also need to think about it from the point of view of the student. So last week when I had my unit on the enlightenment, I had students meet in the computer lab. Uh, they had read Immanuel Kant and Mary Wollstonecraft and so I had them interact with the actual Kant and Wollstonecraft, you know, uh, in a simulated enlightenment salon and ask the questions that they had, ask for more information, attend a salon, who would be there? What would they be talking about? And most of the students in the feedback said they really did feel like that kind of experiential learning uh, where they're experiencing what it was like to talk with somebody um, and get them to explain their ideas was rather helpful. I wouldn't want everything to be like that, but I do think it's an interesting way to, to engage students uh, with the technology. Another idea that I wanna use um, is when we actually do play our role-playing game with the French Revolution in that game, um, I'm gonna ask students to run their speeches by Jean-Jacques Rousseau or Edmund Burke, um, figures long since dead with a lot of primary source writings available on the internet, ask AI in that voice to give the students some tips to critique them, to help them think of new ways uh, to forge their argument as they're debating in our role-playing game. Um, so I think there's ways that we can have students engage with AI, but beyond have AI write my speech or have AI write my, uh, write my paper. So I hope you enjoyed learning more about um, the ways that AI can help us be, uh, have more, be more equitable, uh, be more even-handed, be more affordable uh, for student engaging student activities. Um, and I would love to hear from you if you have more comments or questions. Thank you so much.